Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Royal Sussex Live. Welcome one and all. Thank you so much for being here. Let me see who was here first. Ah, Lydia Washington. Thank you so much for being here first. And thank you, everyone else. I'll say hello to everyone as I go along. And let's see here. Let me get my slides up. Uh, I am feeling a bit bamboozled, which means deceived. Um, I'm feeling a bit bamboozled. I will show you very soon. Let me get comfortable here. All right. <clears throat> so... Wait, where are my slides? There was a little issue with your file. Please try again in a little while. I don't have a little while. Oh, Lord. Okay, y'all doing too much. Okay, I think it's working now. I was going to say... Maybe I got too much stuff open. Let me start closing some stuff. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. There we go. Got a little nervous for a second there. All right. Um, exposed British media found Sussex squad leader. Oh, uh, let me see. Baldy locks in the three hairs. Prince William. Well, that one is pretty evident. Okay. <clears throat> and off to the races. There we go. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, Sussex Squad. Come on in here, you guys. We got a lot to talk about. Coming in. Close the door behind you. Hey, what's up, Sussex Squad? <laughs> oh, man. I love that. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, first of all, happy Easter on behalf of St. Tabale. May you never lack what is most important in life, health, love, and happiness. Happy Easter from the um, um, St. Tabale. Yes, happy Easter from St. Tabale. Ooh, okay, that didn't come out like I thought it would, but no worries. Good enough. All right. And move that over there. And okay. Okay. Um, so, yes, happy Easter from Centibale. I promise you, I'm not fixing anything right now. If I made a little mistake, it can it's just fine. I'm not gonna fix it. But I did notice it. God, I hate that. Gives me something to fuss about. You know what I mean? But not tonight, because I got work to do. Okay. All right, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it. <clears throat> But <laughs> okay, there's my obsessive compulsive disorder playing out in front of us. All right. <clears throat> so this is Charles the Third, King Charles the Third. On his wedding day, I can still remember, or as I like to say, I recall with great accuracy when <clears throat> Lady Diana Frances Spencer, um, she repeated after the Archbishop of Canterbury. And she said, Philip Charles Arthur George Mountbatten Windsor, instead of Charles Philip Arthur George Mountbatten Windsor. And of course, if it wasn't for Princess Diana, I wouldn't know anything about the royal family. Well, at least not as much as I do now. And all these years later, what appears to be a broken 
broken man, a foolish man at that. <clears throat> I'm, I'm just going to say it. Foolish, very foolish man. And broken, uh, Charles III. This guy did so much to get everything in place for his reign, only to get that terrible, terrible news. And, um, well, now he's being treated for cancer. Now, if you take a look here, this was for the Maundy Day service. They didn't have a video. They decided to just go with an audio, and then Charles would sit at the desk with a microphone, and he would read his speech out, which was played in the, um, oh, God, I forget which cathedral, but it was read in church, and um, Camilla, of course, led the occasion. The Prince of Wales was not required, nor did he want to come, I'm sure, but the last time they had this ceremony, it was Charles and Camilla, uh, and even the time before that, because the queen was ill, so it was impossible for her to go. So Charles and Camilla went to the Maundy Day service, which um, is a celebration of that biblical story, I believe, of Charles, of Charles, of Christ washing the feet of the poor and all of that. You see the Pope do that sometimes. Well, <clears throat> based on that principle, the British royals, I guess since medieval times, they have given out money, a little coin to uh, 75 people. I think it was like a total of 150 people that were rewarded for their hard work or being a volunteer, whatever the case may be, pillars of the community. Um, well, that broken man could not go because just like his mother, he was being treated for cancer. And the oddest thing is that this is the first time that I believe in history that someone who was not a blood royal, in other words, not the sovereign, and not the regent. Uh, I believe this is the first time they've ever had a queen consort, a consort actually issue out the coins. And so if that is an indication of how serious things is, um, you know, I don't know what else you would need to know. So I'm going to share this with you. Again, this is from the Commonwealth Day, which was earlier this month, right? And then, of course, this is from today, uh, probably recorded a day or two ago. And then yesterday, this is what we noticed. Uh, well, let me point this out. I know there's going to be some conspiracy theorists that will say, oh, wait a minute. Um, he is wearing the same outfit. They must have done these on the same day. Actually, he's wearing the same necktie, but he has a different square in his pocket and also probably a different shirt, I'm sure, as well as the fact that one suit has a bit of a, a plaid uh, pattern to it and the other is a pinstripe. So obviously, same color, but not the same suit. And as you know, Charles doesn't throw anything away and he has been are wearing the same suits for years, for years he's been wearing the same suits. So he's even got one where they had to do a repair, which is super obvious, but he is so proud of that repair, he doesn't mind sharing it with people. So I notice he's not doing the double-breasted suits as much as he used to. He was very much into those double-breasted suits. Um, now, this may be a bit triggering or jarring for you to look at. I shared it yesterday, but I got to show this to you. The hands, the hands. I believe it is only the right hand that is giving him trouble. The right hand almost seems as though it's been burned. Uh, whatever treatment he's receiving, it seems to have caused his white hand, his right hand to look uh, almost leathery. And if you notice in the photo, which is what they used for the speech, they only shared a photo and not a video this time. 
uh, his hand is hidden behind those flowers. So I, if there was any doubt that this man is likely very ill, I don't think we can doubt it anymore because um, he has aged significantly faster than than you would expect even for someone of his age. He just looks that much older. He looks exhausted. And, you know, he said that he was going, well, he didn't say it, but there were people speaking on his behalf that says he's not using Western medicine and that he has opted for something else, an alternative. I hope that whatever he's doing is what's best for him. Um, because if not, I am very afraid for him. I am very afraid for him. Um, of course, I have my feelings about things that he's done in his life. And most notably to Princess Diana and Prince Harry, as well as his short-sighted maliciousness to Harry and his entire family. But then again, I don't know that he's done anything um, well for his own family. So why should I be surprised that um, that Harry's family would, um, you know, suffer because of him? Uh, but... You know, uh, there, there's one way to look at this, uh, whatever treatment he's taken. I saw this the other day, and it was kind of interesting. Freedom, how you can reject modern medicine and die like a medieval peasant by Rand Paul. <laughs> well, I don't care for that libertarian lunatic author, uh, Rand Paul, Um which I can't remember which is father and which is son, but I think they're both nuts. But my goodness, that hand, that hand has given me a sick feeling in my stomach. I feel like things are more advanced than we could have possibly have known. Uh, good night, Joyce Anderson. Thank you for staying around as long as you could. Uh, let me see. Oh, okay. Oh, let me see here. Uh, Deb said, Deb89 says, been listening to Endgame, and it seems King Charles III has never been happy in the moment, never grateful for what he had. Uh, no, his cruelty is eating him up from the inside out. Wow. Well, I can't argue with you. I cannot argue with you. That sounds pretty accurate as far as I'm concerned. Um, how we treat each other, how we feel about ourselves, all of those things could have a, an effect on our, our health. It really can. <clears throat> so um, now I'm going to share this. I'm going to share this. Uh, the Inquirer said, oh, let me see. Oh, gosh, I can't make out that date. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can make out that date. Uh, oh, yeah. So that was February of this year. Uh, yeah, that was February of this year. And, of course, they made their prediction. They made their prediction, which is, you know, pretty scary. But um, to be fair, the Inquirer makes these predictions all the time. Once you reach a certain age, the Inquirer has figured out your life expectancy. I have seen them do that to many people. And, of course, when someone is sick, just like any other tabloid, they find your worst photo, not your best. And, of course, 
most of it is just an educated guess. But, but at the same time, that same inquirer also had some things to say about Kate. And that is, let me see the date. Also February. Is it? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. February 5th. And I think the other one, well, anyway, February 5th. And what's so weird about that is that was before there was any mention of the um, of Kate's cancer. And remember, in Kate's situation, they said that she didn't have cancer. Wait a minute. Let me see that again. Oh, let me see. February 5th. Now, I don't know what day they printed the Inquirer, but February 5th, that's the date that Charles announced his cancer. Oh, my God. That was the date that Charles announced his cancer, February 5th. What a coincidence. What a coincidence that the date that they announced uh, that Charles has cancer, that was the publishing date for the Inquirer. Wow. That is weird. Let me see that again. Yes, it says February 5th. Interesting. Terrifying diagnosis. And you know what? If she was in the hospital on the 17th, and we suspect that she may have gone in sooner, you know what I'm saying? Maybe they have been sitting on top of this information for a while. Possibly. Allegedly. I have to use a lot of allegedly's and possibly's because uh, we don't know anything for sure. But what we do know is that that family is in a lot of trouble. They're in a lot of trouble. And, you know, I don't want to be that person. But I, I can still hear, I can still hear somewhere in my mind, I can still hear the laughter and the um, sarcasm and the vitriol from the tabloid media, from the Royal Rota, right? From those little chat shows they have, from their numerous television appearances. I can still hear the, the mockery that they were uh, throwing at Harry and Meghan. Remember that? I mean, and it's been nonstop. It has been nonstop. And the one thing that I said, and a few other people have said, is that after the coronation, unless there's a state funeral, they don't have anything. They don't have anything. There is going to be a long period of nothingness. And uh, the next big happy occasion will likely be whenever uh, one of the Wells kids get married. Because even, I, I don't think William will have much of a coronation. I don't suspect William will, um, I don't think the country could, could do with that. Especially if for whatever reason, uh, Kate is not there. But then again, knowing William, if Kate isn't there, then he is going to want to call in every party planner <laughs> from here to Harlem. Every party planner from here to Harlem, he's probably going to call them. I mean, not that she won't be here, be here, but just that she may choose to not go to the coronation. But you guys, 
I, I'm not excited about this at all. I'm not happy about it. Of course not. I mean, this is, this is, you know, this is a, someone's father, someone's grandfather, someone's, um, you know, he's the king. And then as for Kate, the future queen, um, do you know that that says February 5th? I cannot get over that. You know, I shared that before, but I don't think that I've ever looked at the date. That says February 5th. That was the day of Charles' announcement. Oh, I feel weird now. Wow. Wow. You just could not make up something like this. You really could not have made up something like this. This all seems almost like a dream or a nightmare or something. And as for, you know, the, the for the people that the royalists or whatever, you know, I'm not I'm not criticizing them. You know, that's the system that people were born into. That's what they're comfortable with, that's what they like, fine. But this is a disaster. Well, I tell you, I hope they both, um, you know, overcome their their illnesses and that they'll be around longer, you know, for the sake of their families, uh, for those children. Yeah, Francilia Mosley, sometimes they do get it right. Uh, by the way, please, if you want to get it right, make sure you hit that like button. Please hit that like button. And also, if you're not a member of Royal Sussex, do consider becoming a member of Royal Sussex. Wow. I'm just, you know what? My mind is just racing with thoughts right now. I really don't know what to say. Um, hmm. Hmm. Okay, let me move on. I guess what what um, what shocked me is I just I didn't notice the date. Did not notice the date. That is kind of kind of odd, weird, strange. Um. Oh, what do you know? How about that? Let me put that on the. At the top of the chat, looks like official Lauren Brown was out today enjoying the weather, it appears. I'm going to put the link for Lauren Brown at the top of the chat. Um, oh, did I do it yet? No, I didn't. Okay, there you go. Lauren Brown just posted a video. And wow, I love that jacket she's wearing. That is nice. Wow, nice color. I love, it looks like an orange. Love that color. Wow, that is nice. Okay, um, so as I was saying, well, we'll get back to this. But um, again, I, I wish them well. I really do. I wish them well. But those hands, that, that hand, and I noticed as well that Charles... Uh, received uh, someone, and I don't think Charles is left-handed. He's right-handed, right? Well, he received someone and one of the diplomats or whatever, and he took the paper with his left hand. He took the document, whatever it was, with his left hand. So I wonder, I hope that's not painful. Yeah, I hope that's not painful. Oh, you guys, I am not ready for King William the Terrible. I'm just not ready for King William. That will be a nightmare. You know how people knew what was coming when Trump got in office? Trust and believe William is going to be horrible. Horrible. He's already shown people who he is, right? And as they say... um, I think it was Michelle Obama, she said, when you go to the White House, it doesn't um, deter, it, 
It was something she said about it actually just reveals who you are or something to that effect. And when William gets that extra added authority, he is going to go cuckoo or even more crazy than he is right now. He is going to be an absolute monster, that one. I promise you, he is going to be a monster. Nothing will ever be the same again when William gets to that throne. It is going to be the stuff of nightmares. Okay. So um, to show you how sometimes they get things right, well, I've shared this a few times. I'm sharing it again. On the 9th of May, 2013, the Globe, an American um, tabloid, they said, um, defiant Camilla, I will be king, a queen. And, of course, we know now, we know now. Wow. Was that 2013? And even in 2013, that was 10 years before the queen died. Well, you see what I mean? That's why I said you cannot believe everything they say. The queen lived another 10 years. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, she lived like almost another 10 years. That was 2013. And already they were saying that dying Elizabeth too weak to fight back. In the end, it did kind of work out that way where the queen didn't have much, um, you know, ability to exert her authority over anything. As a matter of fact, I believe uh, she had absolutely no authority because everything had shifted to Charles. And they say that's the reason why if Charles is very ill, he would not want to share that with people because then he becomes the lame duck uh, king. He uh, will have to sit back and watch his son, William, do everything to him that was done to his mother. You understand what I'm saying? This is going to be a mess, you guys. This is awful. This is awful. And thank you, God, Lord Jesus in heaven. Thank you. It has nothing to do with Harry and Meghan. They are not in this in the least bit, even though we know that they're going to try to blame them. Um, we already know what their what their their twisted minds will do, but this has nothing to do with them. This is a, an entire institution. If the weight of the monarchy cannot survive or not even thrive with everything that's going on right now, then they don't need to be there. They should be able to ride through this no problem. And they will, but with problem. There's going to be a lot of problem for them. There's going to be a lot of problems. They're, William is not fit. Um, they said that about Trump, temperamentally uh, unqualified. And that's the same thing with William. He doesn't, he's not qualified. He's not, he's not smart. He, he lacks empathy. He lacks empathy. He lacks good judgment. And with, with that, he has that in common with his father. But Charles lacks good judgment when it comes to family. I'll say that. William lacks good judgment in every arena. Okay. Now, huh, this is why I feel bamboozled. This is why I feel bamboozled. Um, Christopher Nolan, Emma Thomas, and Ted Sarandos honored by King Charles III. Let me say that again. Oh, wait a minute. Christopher Nolan, Emma Thomas, and Ted Sarandos honored by King Charles III. Okay, frankly, 
I don't care about those other two. But the chief of Netflix. So I just took two. Uh, I just uh, took two paragraphs from the column. Co-chief executive officer of Netflix, Ted Sarandos, will also be honored as a commander of the Order of the British Empire for his service to the creative industries. The honor is one of the highest that can be awarded in the United Kingdom. Sarandos joined Netflix in 2000 and has been responsible for content operations since green lighting shows, including Emmy Award winning series, The Crown. He approved as co-chief executive officer in 2020, sharing the position with Greg Peters, who was formerly chief operating officer and chief product officer. Why am I feeling bamboozled? Because this is the guy who gave the green light to the crown. This is the guy who gave the green light to reimagine the history of Princess Diana, to reimagine the history of Harry as far as the royal family is concerned. And even more insulting, he gave the green light to rewrite the history of Charles and Diana, of the Queen and Diana, and Philip and Diana, and everybody else. And of course, Willie Leakes, who came across as this very pious, very noble, someone who was not in it, but of it, or not of it, but in it, or whatever, you all do understand that the crown is going to be a reference for the history of that family for a very long time. And most people are not going to crack open a book. They're not going to look at the endless documentaries, which I think are also pretty biased and slanted and also an attempt to rewrite the history. But I'm just like, why am I feeling betrayed by this? I don't like it. I don't like it. This, th These connections are just too convenient and too cozy. So is this honor a way of saying thank you for humanizing Charles and Camilla? Thank you for humanizing Charles and Camilla. Couldn't have done it without you. I mean, there's Peter Morgan, the creator of the crown. Uh, Peter Morgan holding his trinket, watching the crown the way it was meant to be watched with Wikipedia. Now that's smart because if you don't watch it with Wikipedia, then they completely get away with the lies. This was loosely based on actual events. And so they were going after Harry uh, for accepting a contract with the, what do you call it, the, the, with Netflix, the people that are going to destroy the crown. And they made people believe that Netflix was actually bad for the monarchy. When it, by the time it was all said and done, Netflix was the best thing that's happened since the movie The Queen. Like right here, Richard Eaton, will this make Prince Harry and Meghan regret signing their multi-million dollar deal with Netflix? Boycott Hurtful TV Crown says King's Friends. Remember Judy Dench um, wrote an open letter about that and... Everybody was getting all worked up, and I laughed. I'm like, that's what they get. <laughs> Turns out that everything was going their way. It was bad enough that Peter Morgan was rewarded with one of those OBEs or whatever he has, but now they give one to the 
the the the the guy from Netflix? Is he British or is he American? I thought he was American. I didn't think Americans could get that. I am feeling bamboozled. I feel like this was all just a very uh, clever ploy, a ruse to rewrite the royal history, to, to remake history in their own image, the way they would tell the story. This is no different from the way they... Uh, told the BBC to omit certain things from the permanent record from the uh, coronation. When they re-aired the coronation, anything that was, shall we say, not picture perfect was removed at the request of the palace. And here we have the same thing playing out with this docudrama where everything went their way. The queen certainly didn't look bad and only humanized her. Charles, oh, he really got an upgrade. Charles had the mother of all upgrades. Look at Peter Morgan just smiling. Oh, thank you. Oh, I thank you for doing a good turn, whatever a good turn means. You see what I'm saying? Charles just is happy. They really pulled one on us. They really pulled one on us. I mean to tell you, they could not have uh, orchestrated this any better. They had everybody thinking that this was just going to be the undoing and how could Harry and Meghan have that contract when the truth is everything was going their way? And then right here, Prince Harry threw a fit and cut Dominic West out of his life. Friends revealed details of Crown star uh, fallout with the royal after actor said he stopped speaking to him after saying Duke drank champagne out of a false leg. Ugh, who cares? But I just wanted to share this with you again for a certain reason. This is the guy who played Harry's father in The Crown, Dominic West. Like I said, Charles got the mother of all upgrades they found a very handsome, distinguished-looking actor to play Charles instead of, well, I don't know who they could have replaced him with. Maybe that donkey from Winnie the Pooh? Yes, yes. It, this, Thank you so much, BC. You set a mouthful. This is truly North Korea. Everything goes the way they want it to go. And the orders come straight from the top. Oh, Francilia Mosley. I uh the, the last two seasons of The Crown. If you all have not watched it, and I this is so rare for me to say this, don't. It was awful. It was horrible. It was horrible. The only reason why I still have my Netflix account is because of the Sussexes. That's the only reason. Otherwise, I would join the, the, the people that have stepped away from it. I, you couldn't, I mean, you couldn't have done better than this. You could not have done better than this. It's as though Charles and Camilla laid in the bed and wrote the script themselves. Talk about six degrees of separation. Uh, it is alleged that Lily James had an affair with Dominic West, um, who is married to or was married to Catherine. I guess he's still married to Catherine Fitzgerald, who is divorced from Edward Lam Lampton, whoever that is. And then Marina Hanbury, his sister Rose Hanbury, uh, who I guess was married to him, Edward Lambert, and who is the great nephew of. Frida Dudley Ward, who was having an affair with Edward VIII, uh, who is the great great 
uncle of William the Terrible and great, great nephew, of course, of Edward VIII. And of course, um, the father of, uh, I don't even know who made this, but keeping up with the crown. <laughs> Keeping up with the crown. They don't stray too far, do they? <laughs> oh, you got that right, B10 pal. I don't know too many men that have childbearing hips, catch your mid hands, and of course, ears like a satellite dish. There's only so many people uh, who could play Charles, but the easy part is getting them to wear that cherry lip gloss. That that should come easy. Netflix shares jump after gaining 2.4 million subscribers. Video streaming service predict it is done with shrinking quarters as it rolls out um, ad supported tier. Well, anyway, that's that's the last report I heard from Netflix. I don't even know how long I had this slide, but I just throw that in there. But, um, and poor Diana. You know, the last person to play Diana, she was really pretty. But this girl, she's pretty, but it looks like she's got that weird facial tick, like something wrong with her mouth. And to think she was just a stand in, and then they decided to hire her as the actual Diana. Um, they did a job on Diana, too, because Diana totally lapped, uh, lacked any depth of character whatsoever. Um, and all of the great deeds and, and such that Diana had done in her life was totally ignored. They showed Charles breakdancing, but they couldn't show all of the great things that Diana has done. Oh, that was wicked. Uh, speaking of wicked... That is the queen consort, Camilla, um, Cam formerly Camilla Barker Bowles, but now Camilla, the queen consort, or as Sonny Hostin says, the queen cohort. Well, Camilla was at the Monday Day service. This is the first time that I know of that someone who was not a blood royal was to go and uh, execute this very sacred duty on behalf of the monarch, Camilla. Now, if you all recall, if you all recall, what did they say? Uh, the Globe magazine, Globe newspaper, whatever. They said that Camilla was uh, uh, going to seize the throne. This is yet another public duty that Queen Elizabeth II had done for almost 70 years. I think there was a couple of occasions when she was pregnant or whatever, but, um, and now you got the side piece doing it. This is what's wrong with that family. It is going to hell in a handbasket. None of this stuff should be happening. This, this other half of an adulterous affair is handing out a very, or, or executing this very religious, oh God, let me keep going. <laughs> and right there, it wouldn't be complete if they didn't have other people's children. You gotta throw in other people's children. Otherwise it's just not royal. But, I suspect uh, that Camilla has a darker side. And whenever all of those kids they brought to the Westminster, or what church was that? Whatever church it was, whenever they left, um, I hope they look behind the seats because there may have been a monster on the back of the bus. <laughs> this is like a Stephen King movie, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there may have been a monster under the seats. You never know. In the daytime, she seems like the doting uh, uh, queen consort loves children. But at night, when nobody's looking, 
probably several of them have have disappeared. <laughs> oh man. You know where I got that from, right? That was when they were in um what was it, Kenya? That was when they were in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, yes, there was some booing and such today because of the um, Republic people. They were out there um, screaming, down with the crown, down with the crown. Not the most original thing, but I'll, I'll take it. And right here, uh, Princess Catherine's cancer video spawns fresh round of AI conspiracies. Well, this was in the Washington Post uh, today, or yesterday, rather, when Catherine Princess of Wales released a video statement last week sharing that she had been diagnosed with cancer. Some users on social media said they regretted engaging in wild speculation about her prolonged public absence. Well, let me say this one more time. Whether or not she has cancer, I don't know that people were asking where is uh, Kate because they were hoping for bad news. People, a lot of people were genuinely concerned about her. At a certain point, there were a lot of squatties that were just like, you know, I don't want anything to have happened to her. I know I don't really care for her, but I've heard that over and over again. And that was squatties that said that. I said that. You know, especially for the sake of her children, I didn't want anything terrible to happen to her. I didn't want her to to have, you know, and there was a lot of speculation about what could have happened. Um, everything from domestic stuff to you name it. And there were even squatties that were, you know, like I've been a victim of, of domestic stuff. And if something like that happened, you know, I hope she can get help. I mean, people were genuinely concerned. Whatever they say, no matter how they try to uh, say that the Sussex squad is some monolith and they just uh, hate the royal family, they want to end the monarchy. The truth is people were genuinely concerned. It just, it seemed so odd that uh such a public person disappears, right? I'm not even going to go into all that, but we know what was said in spite of how they're trying to rewrite things in these tabloids and on these talk shows and such. But uh, it's, it goes on to say, um, but others jumped immediately to a new conspiracy. The video was generated by artificial intelligence. And as I was listening to Petto earlier, Petto said the same thing that I've heard other people say. I believe I said it the other day, uh, not exactly in the same way, but what I was stitching together was that just by chance, just by circumstance, in the year 2024, you take a picture on a sunlit path in Windsor of mother and daughter and everything is grainy and there's some fifth wheel on the vehicle that is hard to explain, right? Then there's another photo, and this is the one that I felt very insulted, is that Kate's, the palace would not say that that was Kate with her mother, but the palace were glad to say that Kate and William were seen driving away from Windsor and uh, the most implausible thing, he dropped her at an appointment before he went on to Westminster Abbey for the, um, uh, what do you call it, the um, Commonwealth Day. That sounds so suburban, doesn't it? Husband drops off wife for, they didn't say appointment, but he dropped her off someplace else. And the person that was in the car with William seemed to wear a bow in her hair and perhaps a fancier. None of that made any sense. 
And just by chance, that person turned their head because whoever saw the motorcade thought, I'll just snap one picture and one picture only. I'm sure it's going to come out perfectly well. Now you can see why people have a problem with that. I do. And then, of course, the farmer's market. That was a whole nother world. But in all three cases, there was no good photo. There was a grainy photo. There was always some reason to give doubt. And even the Mother's Day photo was a, a catastrophe. So essentially, we've seen five different Kate Middletons, whether it was photographed, video, or whatever. We've seen five Kate Middletons in a very short period of time. And even if, for whatever reason, Kate looked different because of her illness, the, it was quite dramatically different every time. And the lack of quality, including the cancer confessional on the bench, where, you know, it, I, I showed you guys already that they deliberately had this hazy glow in the photo, a very unnecessary hazy glow in the photo. That would be something that was done deliberately. There was no logical reason for that unless you want people to continue doubting. Unless you want people to continue to doubt, why ever would somebody uh, put something out like that? But they did. They did. And it did not matter. That was the way it was. And that's all to it. And we don't care what anybody thinks. Which to me sounds like it's deliberate. They deliberately want people to talk about this. Which means that they're distracting from something else and hiding something in plain sight. Something is being hidden in plain sight. And for the life of me, I cannot even imagine what it is. I have to tell you, I ain't that sharp. I, I can't figure out what the play is, but there is a play. Trust and believe there is something at play. See there? Let's see how, how well illuminated Kate is. Um, she has color. There's color in the background. Not exactly the way that they wanted things. They wanted things to be very pale, like you see on the left side there. It was supposed to be very pale, whatever that implies. Illness, um, to make her look more attractive, I don't know. But it was unnecessary because it is 2024, and no matter how ill she may or may not be, they could have given some quality, stunning images just the same, but they chose not to. And again, I just want you all to think about something. Nobody asked her to tell us that she has cancer. The only point of where is Kate was to make sure that she was alive. Proof of life, that's what people said. It was Kate who decided that she wanted to tell us exactly what was wrong. But then again, she did not because we still don't know what kind of cancer it is, which again, throws it right back into another conspiracy. You have cancer, but you won't say what it is. Charles has cancer. He won't say what it is. Such is born another conspiracy. This is why none of this is anybody's fault but the communication team at the palace. And if they are doing as they're told, then it's William's fault and it's Kate's fault. That's who's at blame. Is because they have been deliberately tweaking the nose of the public. For what reason? I know not why. But it's not imagined. 
I'm seeing it real time. You all have seen it real time. This is what they have presented. This is the public face of Kensington Palace. And the public face of the palace is to keep confusing, to, cre to create doubt. It's compelling for someone to confess that they have cancer, but it wasn't necessary. We were okay with the um, abdominal surgery. You said you had surgery. People accepted that you had surgery. Well, until after, well, and, and still, there were, up until that point, I will confess that there were many theories about where she could be. And still, no one has officially addressed the December 28th motorcade. Now, the palace knows that that's out there. They could say yay or nay. That's all they have to say is yay or nay. That was us. That was not us. And they won't do it. And there will be no official police record because one of the ways they conceal the cost of the monarchy is by saying that we won't discuss the price of their protection because that is a security issue. If we tell you how much it costs, then that puts them at risk. What? Okay. Uh, Kat Harlem said, uh, could they uh, be hiding the release of Virginia, the book? Uh, they're expecting more dirty details about this sick old man. Uh, Kat Harlem, you know, we haven't, <laughs> we haven't heard anything from her, have we? We haven't heard anything, but I tell you this much. There was a book that was going to come out about Oprah with some very, very uh, shady details about Oprah's life. And the book allegedly was killed because Oprah uh, did not want anyone to tell her story. And so then Oprah among other things, she went on her show and confessed to having used a bit of the nose candy back in the day and some other stuff about herself. Stuff that was going to be in the book. Do you all remember that? But the book was not published. And in exchange for that, allegedly, Oprah put more money in the pockets of the publishing community than they had seen for years with her cooking with Rosie one of the best, if not the best-selling cookbook ever. And, of course, the Oprah's Book Club. That just, it was like Oprah was printing money. It was like she just went in her office and told her staff, here, make a photocopy of this. All right, now start printing them out. That's how they were making money in the publishing industry. And money talks. So the money talked, and the book, well, the book never seen the light of day. Never seen the light of day. Also, you should know that the Oprah Winfrey show at the time was distributed by King World, which a uh, parent company was it? Let's see, King World, I think, was a parent company of CBS, was it at the time? And whatever publishing company, was it Penguin? And some other stuff. So you know, it was a lot of interest there. So when Oprah said, I don't want that book out, the book did not come out. And since then, there has been really no really interesting books about her. Um, and that just goes to show when somebody wants to make things different, they can make things different. Allegedly, for the lawyers that are listening, allegedly. But thank you, Kat Harlan. And thank you for being a member of Royal Sussex. Well, it is a bit of a stretch, but I think it's something bigger. I think it's something bigger. Whatever it is, I think it is for the protection of Willie Leaks. I think everything comes down to protecting Willie Leaks. 
And if that involves, you know, moving some pieces around uh, with uh, the Duke of York, then I think they'll do that. But everything is done to Will William is the future of the royal family. William is the future of the monarchy, and they are going to do everything to protect him. Uh, let's see. Only one AI expert contacted. This was the other part of that uh, article I shared. I don't know why I have it down here, but um, only one AI expert contacted by the Post, the Washington Post, offered support for the suspicious deep fake de detection startup Deep Media, which has contacts with the Pentagon said it found a high likelihood that Catherine's voice and face were manipulated with AI. But other experts, including Fareed uh, Abd Almagi uh, and Claire Wardell, co-founders and co-director of the Information Future, is it Futures Lab? Yeah, Futures Lab at the Brown University, reviewed deep media finding that the post request said they found the results unconvincing. So there are people, expert people, who have looked at Kate on the bench, and uh, a lot of people believe that is okay. There's nothing to see. And other people are saying that, nah, there's something ain't right about this. But the point is, the quality of that video was unnecessarily poor. It was unnecessarily poor. And if you want to get people talking, then again, this is the fifth Kate that we've seen since Christmas. The fifth Kate since Christmas. And one Kate, uh, the Mother's Day Kate, we know for sure that that was not Kate. That was a, a head transplant of some sort. So we know that wasn't Kate. Um, and of course, the cancer confessional, if you need to, to stop people talking, that's one way to do it. That will shut down the conversation. And it seems to have worked to a certain degree, at least at the very least, they got a, a lot of apologies that I didn't think were warranted, but they got a lot of apologies. Uh, so Sussex Wallet. You guys have been very, very bad, Sussex Squad. Inside the sinister world of the Sussex Squad online trolls making Kate Middleton's life a misery with bullying and lies, the Sussex Squad makes outlandish claims about Kate in uh, defense of their heroine, Meghan Markle. Now, this, of course, is an article from The Sun. And right there, you can see they did a centerfold. Isn't that something? I wonder if Christopher Boozy ever thought he would be a centerfold and that he would share that centerfold <laughs> with Kate. Anyway, vile slurs about Kate, death threats to Meg's enemies, trolls who are proudly Sussex squad. Well, um, they assume too much, don't they? Not everybody. Uh, that has been calling them out recently are Sussex Squad. They're not all Sussex Squad. I know that. You all know that. But they're pretending that it's otherwise, which is their prerogative. So who is the mystery leader of the Sussex Squad? Any guesses, anybody? I mean, you probably already know. The mystery leader of Sussex Squad. Who could it be that has led us all this time? Uh, Deborah Anderson says, I'm not a troll. Okay, I believe you. Uh, that's right, Carlene Beckford. It is Christopher Boozy. Christopher is our dear leader. 
He's our dear leader. Christopher Vosey, our dear leader. He is the secret head, the unseen hand that is in charge of the Sussex squad. <laughs> and he has enough medallions and medals and trinkets and little chocolate pieces wrapped in foil to prove it. That is our leader. I had no idea. As a matter of fact, I think that it would be a big surprise to Christopher Boozy uh, when he finds out that he is the leader of the Sussex squad. But the truth is, the truth is, there is no leader. This is the head of the Sussex squad right here. It is an anonymous individual or individuals. It is nobody and everybody. We all are dancing to our own music. We are not singing from the same hymn book, at least not every day. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Uh, but we all have different opinions. Um, Christopher Bosey is a tech entrepreneur, not the leader of the Sussex Squad. I wouldn't even say that he is a member of the Sussex Squad of any stripe. He is just someone who noticed that there were some anomalies with the, um, I guess, the algorithm, the, the way that uh, Megan's name was being dragged through the mud and disparaged. She was being bullied online. And he had never seen anything like it. It seemed like it was like it was some type of espionage, like it was some type of, um, uh, what is it? Uh, like, like, like it was some kind of a war of of uh, machines or whatever, bots and and paid agitators. And when he noticed that, he spoke out about it. And of course, um, I don't know anything about him, but he appears to be a person of color of mixed race, perhaps. I don't know. Um, but whatever his background is. There are a lot of people, just like um, Meredith Constant, um, just like a lot of people that are not squatties, and they talk about these matters every day or from time to time. There are people that feel like there's something that has gone terribly wrong, that there has been an injustice, and they want to push back. Now, for me, plain and simple, um, as my blood originates in Africa, mixed in with some of this and some of that, I identify with the black race. I am a black man. I'm a black person. Uh, I'm an African-American. I'm an American of African descent. And likewise, when I see someone um, that looks like any of my relatives, um, when I see someone that uh, like Doria, that looks like she could be my mother. When I, well, of course, she's not old enough to be my mother, but anyway, you get the point. She looks like someone who could be my mother. And when you look at it like that, it, it was very hurtful to me to see that happening. And I thought it was a terrible injustice. Now, likewise, I have stood up for a lot of people. As a matter of fact, I was a huge supporter of Hillary Clinton. Of course, now with this thing in Gaza, I'm not so cool with her. But um, still, she was one of the first people that spoke out on Megan's behalf. So she's got that going for her. And I felt as though a grave injustice was done to Hillary Clinton. Whether you like her or not, the judges that uh, some of those federal judges that we depended upon all these years, some of those federal judges that Obama depended upon, they were put there by the Clintons, meaning, of course, Hillary Clinton. There were a lot of things that Hillary Clinton was in charge of when they were in the White House. And so uh, a lot of those politicians, a lot of those Democrats that went into office, uh, a lot of people owed her a lot, and I felt horrible by the way she was being treated, not once, but twice. So it's not solely based on race who I 
get very emotional about, but um, I was very hurt by the way Hillary was treat, uh, treated. I thought it was injustice. I thought a lot of people, um, you know, people that even helped, that she helped, had uh, threw her under the bus. And so on principle, I was a huge supporter of hers. And even though I'm kind of feeling differently about her now, but at the time, I felt very just in the cause, and I thought an injustice was done. And so it's on those same principles that I am supporting the Duchess of Sussex and Prince Harry and their family because I have seen people try to destroy them that tried to end their lives in real time in front of the world, and they did not care what anybody thought about it. And some of those same dark forces are still targeting them at this moment. Unfortunately, some of it is coming right from inside of the household, but oh, still hard to believe, still hard to believe. So right here it says, I woke up this morning and discovered the British press had promoted me to the leader of the Sussex squad. Does the title come with benefits and a 401k plan? Do I have any official duties or is it just a title? Do I at least get a body double? You're not serious, people. Uh, yeah, they're serious. <laughs> Um, of course, they know that uh, he's not the leader of the Sussex squad, but that doesn't matter. Uh, they love to have a boogeyman. And if they can find someone of darker uh, skin tone, someone that is rich with melanin, then that's a perfect candidate for the boogeyman. So that is the unofficial title, boogeyman. Um, so Sussex squalid inside the sinister world of the Sussex squad online trolls making Kate Middleton's life a misery with bullying and lies. The Sussex squad made outlandish claims about Kate in defense of their heroine, Meghan Markle. Oh, OK. That that one is a second time I read that one. And then right here. I'm sorry, but Prince William isn't sexy. That is quarantine thirst talking. William looks like a balding Muppet. Well, they have been going through Christopher Bosey's tweets, and uh, some of them are hilarious. I have shared some of them with you over time, and they are hilarious. I mean, you got to say this guy, for a computer person, I guess I'm trying not to say nerd, but he seems like a bit of a nerd. And for someone that's a bit of a nerd, he has a hell of a sense of humor. But again, I don't know him. So he may not be a nerd. But I always think tech nerds, tech nerds. But uh, yeah, he has a great sense of humor. Please don't forget to hit that like button. 19. Uh, 63, there's 1,963 people. Please hit the like button and do consider becoming a member of Royal Sussex. Membership started just $4.99. Without you guys, there would be no Royal Sussex. Okay, so it's been uh, confirmed. Now, this takes a very murky, murky turn right here. It's been confirmed uh, to me by a major UK news broadcaster that the Princess of Wales does indeed have stage four bowel cancer. Now, what's odd about this tweet, what's odd about this tweet is that it, it's no longer available. It's no longer available. Now, over there, you can see the tweet came from Simon, right? And over here, it came from Charles and Charles Anonymous. And of course, the name Charles could not be a coincidence. They were trying to, I don't know. I don't know what they what the idea of it was. But the tweet is gone. The tweet is gone. And the account locked. Charles' account is locked. 
What does that all mean? Well, there's no way that we should accept this as being true. The only thing we know is true is what they say. God, I can't believe I said that. Seeing where we are right now, I hope that nobody <clears throat> is making up anything about an illness like this. And from the very start, when there were doubts about the whole hospital stay and everything, there were, there were two things that bothered me. Number one, the idea that the children would be pulled into this some kind of way or put in a position where the children would have to lie, and I didn't want that to happen. The other thing that bothered me is that with the respect that I have for medical science and the medical community, doctors, nurses, techs, everybody, the people that work in the cafeteria, the people that clean and strip those rooms down, everyone who works in the medical community, I have a great deal of respect for. Because of them, the life expectancy is so much higher. I mean, out of everybody in this conversation right now, uh, there are several of us that if it was not for medical science, we wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for antibiotics, surgery, and so on and so forth, we wouldn't be here. At least half of us would probably not be here. That's how important it is. Most of us have spent some time in a hospital. So I respect the medical community and the idea that the medical community may have to bear false witness for the sake of the royal family <clears throat> bothered me. And so I'm still wondering, I'm still wondering how much of what we're hearing is true and how much of it is false. And I hope that we never find out that anybody has bared false witness. I hope we don't find out. I really don't because I want to believe in the medical community. At least I don't want to find out that they have anything to do with it. If it's the other people, fine. But leave the doctors, leave the children, the nurses, the hospitals, leave all of them out of whatever is at play. That's, that's what would bother me. So aside from that, I don't care what they do. Um, but that's what bothered me from the beginning is the whole thing about the hospital. because. They we get a statement saying that the surgery was what the 16th or the 17th, but yet we see this motorcade, and then there are people that believe that she wasn't in that hospital in the first place. And so whoever was after those medical records, if somebody was after them, and see, that's the other thing. Did the hospital lie and say somebody targeted her records? And, of course, they're saying, oh, they wanted Kate's medical records to destabilize trust and security in the, the United Kingdom. But she's not the head of state. She's not the prime minister. None of that makes sense. So if this is a lie, why are you lying? And, again, does this bring the hospital into it? Did something happen or did it not? That's what's so dirty about this whole thing is there, there seems to be something at play and there's so many inconsistencies. And with that, they have really dropped the ball. You know, let me do another one of my cons comparisons. Donald John Trump, president of the United States, he had the sympathy and the goodwill of the entire world with that global pandemic. All he had to do was act like a human being, and he squandered it. Um, uh, George Herbert Walker Bush, the younger Bush, no, George W. Bush, the younger Bush, W. When the United States was attacked at the World Trade Center, Pentagon, and all that, Again, the world was so sympathetic to the U.S. And he squandered that by having two unnecessary wars with people that did not attack us. And so 
trust is very important. And so now they have created so much distrust in the royal family that no matter what they say or do, nobody is ever going to take what they say as being the truth, ever. That has totally been squandered, and that is their fault, and they're trying to blame everybody, including the Sussex squad. That is their fault, not our fault. We did not start that. They did that. Uh, Lex says, agree, but the Met lies, so I, do, I don't know. Yes, Lex, you're so right. The Met police, they are big, 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 huge, huge liars. The Met police, the ones that made a police report saying that Megan was at a vigil for Sarah Everhard when it was actually Kate Middleton. Kate Middleton's name did not go on the police record for violating the law, which she was violating the law. But when the, what was her name, Cressida Dix, the one that was in charge of the police at the time, she goes on television and say, well, actually, she was acting in her official role. Her official role is to follow the law like everybody else. But instead, the police said nobody should be out. There should be a limited amount of people in any place per global pandemic. And so when it came down to it, a lot of those women were attacked and arrested by the police because they were at a vigil for a woman who was unalived by a Met police officer. And Kate, they lied for her and said she was, I mean, Kate went down there as, as Kate with her bodyguards or Royal Protection Officers. And unlike the rest of the people, she didn't have a face mask because she wanted to make sure everybody could see, look at me, I'm important, I'm Kate Middleton. So some women, the peasants were arrested. Kate Middleton was never there. According to the Met Police, it was Megan. Thank you, Lex. Brilliant as always. Brilliant. So, again, you guys, um, how this person knows this or suspects this, is, is it a hoax? But the thing is, this seems to be the same person who predicted that Kate was going to confess to having cancer an hour before she sat on that bench or before that video was released. Now, it was recorded by the BBC. It was not a live event, right? It was not a live event. It was pre-recorded by the BBC. And as such, because it was 6 p.m., it would have been probably a little darker and everything. So as such, it was people that knew, but they tried to keep it secret. Did someone in the group leak that information or what? So this is twice that this person has come forward with information that nobody is supposed to know outside of that circle. So because of the other tweet, this really is awkward because, first of all, I hope it's not true. I hope she doesn't have stage four bowel cancer. I hope that's not true. Because I think that's pretty bad, if I'm correct. Um, but given the track record of the two tweets, that is kind of scary. That is kind of scary. That is disturbing. You see there? Um, update. Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton, has been receiving chemotherapy since the surgery a few months ago, this confirms my original statement of her cancer diagnosis. And before that, you can see the tweet from um, the confessional. Um, well, from prior to the, well, before the confessional. So afterwards, she said chemotherapy. But before that, the person said, through my line of work, certain individuals from the press have said that at 6 p.m., 
the Daily Mail will publish an article saying Kate Middleton, the Princess of Wales, has been diagnosed with cancer. So this person had privileged information uh, both before uh, that and then it seems like, uh, oh, wrong direction. Wait a minute, where did it go? Oh, there we go. Um, so that's why this is so concerning because I don't want it to be true. But, um, wow, makes you think. Heavy topics today, you guys, some very heavy topics. But um, worth discussing, I believe. And also, as per usual, now the account doesn't exist. The account does not exist. The account that had very few, if any, I don't think it had any followers or very few followers. It just seemed like a phantom account that came out of nowhere and just as fast it disappeared. Uh, Serengeti says that person is inside the house. Yeah, seems like it. Uh, Anastasia says, I am thinking they are hiding something very big, and I suspect that it ha it uh, has something to do with the supposedly divorce news that was supposed to be announced back in January. Yeah, that would be big. That would be big. But from what someone was saying, that they are trying to convince William to not be a solo king. They say that they're trying to convince William to uh, stay in his marriage. Allegedly, that's what they're saying, is that they're trying to convince him to stay in his marriage. Now, if trying to convince him would involve more lies than you could shake a stick at, that is such a stretch. And I just don't want to believe that any of that is possible because that's got too many moving parts and that would involve so many people just to try to keep him contained. Now, would they go through that amount of, you know, or, or any amount because we have been deceived on several occasions and as things stand, we don't know what is or is not the truth because they have been playing a bit of a deception game with everyone. So now we can't trust them. Now we cannot trust them. Anything, the palace has been um, put on notice by Associated Press, among others, that they are no longer, let me say this very clearly, there are, what was it, three, four, five, five news agency, international news agency says that they are not trustworthy. Let that sink in. Five international news agencies said that Kensington Palace can no longer be trusted. So as I say everything that I've been saying for the past hour and 30 minutes, there's that little caveat right there is that it's been said loud and clear by five news organizations not to trust them. If they release a video, we have to inspect it. If they release a photo, we have to inspect it. And they had been getting away with it for a long time. But what makes this different, if you're wondering what makes this different, is as they said, and I agree, because we didn't see Kate for 80 days, whatever image of Kate that came out would serve as proof of life. And that is why the problem started, is because that photo on Mother's Day was proof of life. And how could that have been avoided? Don't disappear for 80 days. That's how you avoid that. 
if you can go to a uh, farmer's market and skip to the loo, my darling, and swing a, a shopping bag all over the place like a helicopter, then you can get on a video and say, hey, thanks for the kind wishes. I'm okay. You didn't even have to say you had cancer. That was a choice. Nobody was forcing that. Nobody forced that. And I'm surprised I don't hear more people saying that, but because they have people in a position where they're forced to apologize for, I think, no good reason, I don't hear anybody saying nobody forced you to do that. I'm trying to see where that was forced because it was not. That was a choice. And it was a way to shut down uh, comments, debate, skepticism. Uh, Dansby said, right, Baron, how does she go from the supermarket to sitting on a bench like she is on death's door? Puzzling, isn't it? And even if you account for, well, uh, there are good days and bad days. They said, they said, the tabloids said that Will and Kate were at a farmer's market and that they watched the children at a sports event now or play sports. No one at this playing the sports had a camera. Nobody except for that one lone individual who English is not his first language, not that that matters, but English is not his first language, um, who knows very little about the Royals, but that was the person who saw Kate and rushed to his car, and he saw them walking toward him, and he wanted to record it for his family at home in another country. He wouldn't even say Brazil. He just said in another country. I think it was from Brazil or Portugal, whatever it was. So Christopher Bosey, I don't know if you guys know this, but he has been punching holes in that man's interview left, right, and center. As a matter of fact, Christopher Bosey has been doing such a good job. That is why he has been dubbed the, well, the official leader of the Sussex squad. This is a disaster of their own making. I'm sorry that it seems as though um, we're, I don't know, digging too deep, if you will, for lack of a better word, but not sorry. Sorry, but not sorry, because this is no different than what they put Harry and Megan through, mostly Megan, of course, for several years. And there just was not loud enough dissent among the um, royal reporters, among the television personalities, and, and, and even within that family. There was little support, no support in most cases. Nobody did anything to help Megan. The only people that were there for her through the worst of times was the Sussex squad. And then, of course, we had the unenviable position of trying to tell other people what was happening. And people would look at us like the RCA dog. They would turn that ear up at us like, why do you care? Well, she knew what she was getting into. And then, of course, I'm sure all of you have experienced this. Something wells up. Your throat gets tight. You feel like you can't breathe because people are not listening to you or they don't believe you. They look at you like you're some kind of conspiracy theorist. When it was playing out, plain as day.
And all we could think of when we woke up in the morning was somebody's got to do something. But who do we talk to? So people like Joan Garcia writing letters, people going to the inboxes and such, people praying. We did what we could. We supported the uh, charities in their name just to help perpetuate the work of the Sussexes. We put our, our money where our mouth was. We literally put our money where our mouth was by supporting those charities. How many times have I shared links? Everyone, all the content creators sharing links to support the Sussexes. We did everything we could. And now the world is listening. Now the greater public is asking the same questions that we ask. They are outraged just like we are. And all the palace wants to do is shut it down to end any speculation, to end the, the, the exposure. They want us to stop. And the, 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 the interesting irony is, at a time, we were the only ones that was worried about Kate Middleton. We were the only ones that was worried about Kate Middleton. Everybody else was going about our business. As a matter of fact, it was the greater public that turned it into a joke. I've been in spaces on Twitter, now X, whatever you call it, and a lot of people were still, you know, I don't care. But the majority of the squaddies in the spaces, I hope nothing happened to her. Oh, if, if such and such happened, what about those kids? That's how the squaddies are. That's how the squaddies are. The derangers did not care. If they would have cared, could you imagine what would have happened if for some reason we didn't see Megan for a long period of time? And I know this is not ever a thing, but and Harry just didn't have a good answer for us. Doria, we didn't see her. What do y'all think would have happened? There would be a whole bunch of people standing outside the house in Montecito in no time. But for Kate Middleton, nobody even sent flowers to the hospital. Nobody asked, where's her mother? The only people that asked those questions were the Sussex squad. And who knows, you guys, who knows? The fact that Kate is alive today may be due in part to us. Bit of a stretch, but due in part to us. Because we still do not know why she wasn't seen for 80 days. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm just going to say, take a little credit and say whatever uh, has happened or not happened, I think it, the Sussex Squad may have been the thing that saved her. I'm just saying. Not impossible. Not impossible. Because we were asking questions. Nobody else. And then right here, Harry and Meghan ally claims William threw Kate under the bus and accused the palace of lying before Princess Kate revealed cancer diagnosis as conspiracy theories continue. Again, they want to make it seem like we've done something wrong, but we have not. We asked the questions that nobody else did. And as for uh, Christopher Bosey, he pointed out the same thing Richard Eaton did. And that was the fact that William, being a pig, did not um, support his wife properly. He only went to the hospital one time. He only, uh, he took credit for taking the photo. And then when the chips was down, he uh, had somebody put on Instagram, 
oh, sorry, I was trying to use Photoshop. He wasn't supposed to let her take the hit for that. He's a man, a big, tall, burly, girly man. He should have been the one that stood up for the family honor, not Kate. That wasn't her place. She's sick, remember? And only one person in the press that I know of said something, and that was Richard Eaton, of all people. He said that was ungentlemanly. And when he said that, he was warning the palace. He wasn't trying to embarrass them. He was warning them. He was telling them, go tell that girly man that she had better uh, take responsibility for this or else. And what happened? Nothing. They just took that uh, post down and still let people believe that Kate was responsible. Whether or not it was true, William should have taken responsibility for that. TB says, I think so too, Baron. If it wasn't for us asking where she was, she would have just disappeared or worse now that uh, reprieve is gone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So, you guys, I, I'm i not ashamed of anything that has been said or done thus far. Um, first and foremost, we, we are protecting our faves. And in an indirect way, we may have also given her some protection. So, uh, Invictus Endeavor, we're going to change gears for a bit. Invictus Endeavor uh, domestic grants, 10K grants available now. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to make that a little bigger so I can see it. Oh, there we go. All right. As part of our 10-year anniversary, uh, 10,000 pounds is now available to each member of the Invictus community of nations as part of our series of domestic grants. The aim of these grants is to increase access to sporting opportunities for wounded, injured, and sick service personnel and veterans across three member nations of Invictus community beyond the games. Director of Grants and Programs at Invictus Game Foundation Michaela Richards said, we are really excited to launch this series this year as part of celebrating 10 years of changing lives and saving lives through sport. These domestic grants will allow more members of the community to engage with sport and adventure challenge as tool for recovery and allow for foundation to have a greater impact on local communities across the nations. Uh, oh, uh, Susan, let me see here. Uh, you said you said it, Baron Girly Man. I say coward. <laughs> Hold on, my lips are dry. I don't want to split my lips. Mm. <laughs> um. Okay. Mm, I don't want to laugh and split my lip. Okay. <laughs> Unlike uh, Harry that stands up for his wife. Amen to that, uh, Susan Whitlock. You said a mouthful. Amen. Harry always stands up for his wife. Harry protects the women in his life. Always have and always will. Harry made a promise to Megan that he is going to always protect her. And he has definitely made good on that promise. Now, that's what I call a real man. Not that old punk Willie. Willie's a punk. A punk. Big punk. Girl. Big girl. Uh, <laughs> Okay, okay. So, vile slurs about Kate's death threats to Meg, et cetera, et cetera. I wanted to share this, guys, with you. Um, take a look on the right side. You see that? 
Now, this person, if you know what this tweet said, then you know. But as you can see, it was featured in the center of the newspaper. It says Kate Middleton had surgery to permanently implant something, 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 her husband. Meanwhile, King Charles, to see if they can remove the, okay? If you know, you know. So I just want to say that I looked at that particular account. And not only am I not a follower of that account, but nobody that I follow in the Sussex squad follows that account. So whoever wrote that tweet, whoever wrote that tweet is not anybody in the Sussex squad that I know. Okay. Whoever wrote that tweet is not a squatty, but that is what they shared because it helps to make their case. They decided to put that in the paper. But no squatty that I know is responsible for that tweet. None of them. And I'm so glad I checked it because otherwise, you know, I wouldn't have known. But because I did check it, I know for sure that is not a squatty. So that was good news. Now, back to this person. This person. Uh, King Charles, uh, 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 Prince William now faces a serious problem. Why Meghan's new lifestyle brand is a ticking time bomb for the royal family, writes Tom Barrow. Oh, he sounds so pompous. He sounds so pompous. If you opened up a dictionary and look up pompous ass, one of the examples is likely to be Tom Barrow. Right. If you if you opened up an encyclopedia and you look for an animal called pompous ass, that would be Tom Barrow. He's just so erudite and classy. Yeah. Um, that slob, that sloppy old man. He had the caucasity to say that the king and Prince William now face a serious problem why Meghan's new lifestyle brand is a ticking time bomb for the royal family. Now, incendiary is a term which means it has the potential to do a lot of damage, like an incendiary device is what they use during war. Um, they used to have those bombs that were like hot flares and they would land on the roof and anything that was combustible would just explode in fire. Incendiary. So Tom Barrow is using that language to describe Megan's cherry butter. Oh no, strawberry butter. Um, jams, hand creams. Really? You mean to tell me Megan selling a jar of jam or perhaps a gourmet cookie or whatever it is, those household products, those luxury items are going to lead to the destruction of the British monarchy. Because if that's the case, how come the Queen's gin didn't do that? Didn't Queen Elizabeth have a gin or Charles and his biscuits or cookies or whatever, if those products has not ended the uh, royal family, and you guys, the royal family, I think they have issued some 200 royal warrants. The royal warrant is displayed over the entrance of a shop to let people know that the royal family does business at this establishment, that they are the official purveyors of bras for Queen Elizabeth, right? Remember that lady had that shop? She made underwear for Queen Elizabeth. 
her over-the-shoulder boulder holders, she made those for the queen. Now, she lost her royal warrant because she wrote a book that quoted a conversation with the queen. And I guess the visual of the queen standing in a pair of drawers talking about the weather was a little bit too much for Buckingham Palace to bear. As a matter of fact, the idea of seeing anybody of a certain age in that family standing in their drawers discussing the weather would probably make me up, Chuck. So I don't want to think about the queen in her skibbies uh, having a conversation with the bra maker. So I could see why they took her royal warrant away. I mean... I I have a certain level of respect for the queen, and I just don't want to have a vision of someone taking a uh, you know a measuring tape from her rooter to the tutor, and <laughs> you know what I mean. That's like that's like picturing your grandma in her drawers, so. I could, I agree with her losing her royal warrant. Deborah Anderson, thank you so much for the super sticker. And thank you for watching Royal Sussex. Yeah, so certain people, when they lose their royal warrants, they got it coming. But not to stray too far from the issue at hand, Megan is not using her title, American Riviera Orchard. Now, people in the tabloid media said, oh, it's word salad. What does it mean? Doesn't roll off the tongue, does it? Blah, 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 blah. There is a reason for everything. And we know that Harry and Meghan are two very intelligent, hardworking people. If our Duchess found it necessary to do certain things, if she found that title um, logical, then go with it. There's nothing to push back unless you're a hateful um, tabloid media journalist, okay? There's no reason to push back. But uh, Gargamel, Tom Bala, uh, Tom Bala, uh, 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 um, that pompous you-know-what, you just cannot stop him from saying something negative. This, I thought Tom Bauer was supposed to be like some esteemed writer, that he was supposed to be this, you know, this, this big-time writer and everything. But instead, he's just another bully. That's what he is. He's a bully. He has been bullying our Duchess uh, for far too long. When they came out with that book, he was supposed to, that book was supposed to be something that was going to keep Megan up at night. And it turns out it was nothing but a bunch of gossip and regurgitated in your windows and everything was a source said. It was garbage. He had nothing to back up anything. And of course, Omen Scobie said it best. Um, he said, oh, good, another angry white guy writing about Meghan Markle. And then, of course, Maureen had to chime in with her uh, thing. Richard Eden says, uh, there can be no clearer case of prejudice than judging an author not on his writing, but on the color of his skin. Well, the thing is, if you find a situation where, let's say, 93, 94, 96% of the people in a certain industry that are writing about the Duchess of Sussex is, let's, I don't know, white, whether male or female, they're white, then either stop talking about her so much or try to get some positive articles about our Duchess. You don't have to agree all the time. You don't have to, to, you know, be a banner for her, even though you're doing it for the rest of the royals. But the thing is, there, 
there is nothing but negativity day after day after day. And the only people writing those articles are white. Occasionally, they'll find someone like a, what's her name, Akua, Nana Akua. And, you know, we're not even sure she writes her own articles. Now that we found out that some of those articles only have black names and faces, but was written by what? Another old, angry white man. So, um, anyway, thank you, Omit Scobie, for speaking truth. Mm. Tom Bauer's book that was supposed to destroy Meghan Markle, still waiting. Now, I got a bit of a sound bite for you guys. Um, and yes, it involves Tom Bauer and a few other people. Uh, one of the squaddies put these together, and it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, they're very short, as you can see, only a few seconds, but nonetheless interesting. Now, hopefully, this will not um, buffer. I hope that everything plays like it's supposed to, but let's see how it goes. She's Lady Gladhand, isn't she? She's the Duchess of Dosh, the Princess of Kaching. She knows how to make money, and she's going to damn well continue doing it. Mm. Harry, though, much more vulnerable. Um, do I think she would give him up? Because don't forget, he's a big trophy, a big door opener for her. I doubt it. She's Lady Gladhand, isn't she? She's the Duchess of Dosh, the Princess of Kaching. She knows how to make money, and she's going to damn well continue doing it. Mm. Harry, though, much more vulnerable. Um, do I think she would give him up? Because don't forget, he's a big trophy, a big door opener for her. Now, the person that's speaking is left a photo. You see the guy with the white hair and the beige or gray jacket? I don't know who that is, but that's who was speaking. And look at there. There's a woman of African descent just sitting up there, taking it all in, while another woman of African descent is being trashed by what? Another old white man. Another old white man. Do you see a pattern? Anyway, now let's go on to the guy with the red necktie at the top right. I doubt it. It's always been my view that it's not so much a marriage as a hostage situation. And it looks like Harry, California's answer to Terry Waite, may be set for release. Although, frankly, I'd rather be chained to a radiator than chained to this shallow, duplicitous, uh, duplicitous TV actress who wasn't even the best thing in suits. I think meeting this troublemaking upstart was the worst thing that ever happened to Harry. Always keen to talk about his mental health, it's never seemed worse than since he tied the knot to she who must be obeyed. It's now, that's the guy that used to call Megan Yoko Mono. That's not misogynistic, is it? Yoko Mono? Um... And if you don't get that reference, of course, as in Yoko Ono, who was accused of breaking up the Beatles. Well, Megan has been accused of single-handedly destroying the British royal family. And this network, uh, uh, GBN, most of the numbers, most of what they make in terms of ad revenue is driven by bashing Megan. I know it's hard to believe, but that is their bread and butter. That is their stock and trade is bashing Megan. Uh, Megan, uh, manipulative, Harry the fool. That's the daily um, uh, uh, message that they send out is Megan, the manipulator, Harry the fool. Now on to LBC, who unfortunately I know exactly who that is. That is Rachel Johnson, who herself has had a, had her uh, racist moments, greatest hits, like when she, um, was she the one that was straight out of Compton? Oh, no, that was uh, Jan. Wait a minute. Who? Oh, 
She was the one that said the exotic DNA. Okay. Let's get that. It's going. always been my view that. I'm sure he's got spicy views that uh, offend lots of people, but we live in a free country as things stand as of 2023. I would like to think that Nigel Farage can bank with coots, just as I would like to think that Jeremy Clarkson is free to express his extremely unsavoury opinions about the Duchess of Sussex. That is the country I, I want to be in. I don't want to be in a country where banks and uh, you know newspaper bosses or regulatory authorities sit in judgment in a moral way over us. This is woke capitalism. I'm sure he's got spike. So she's defending Nigel Farage, who I would blame for Brexit, among other things, and also, you know, seems to have a problem with people of color. And also, uh, she's defending Jeremy Clarkson, who wrote a book about Megan being paraded through the streets and uh, spat upon and covered in fe feces and that whole awful thing that he wrote the day after he had a luncheon with Camilla, the queen consort. And of course he had lunch with um, Hoghead Pierce Morgan, right? He felt emboldened by his conversation with Camilla and went home and wrote that nasty, awful article. So, um, Again, thank you to the squaddy that put these together. The whole point of this exercise is while we're um, being lectured and chastised about talking about Catherine, asking questions about Catherine the Great, uh, where was all of that outrage? Where was all of that uh, concern? And, oh, if this is how we treat women, remember uh, who said that? It was one of those reporters that uh, was saying that Catherine shouldn't have to go through this. But it was okay for Megan. This is the stuff that Megan's been putting up with. And if you're a hate watcher that's watching Royal Sussex and you choose to not believe a thing I say or you want to justify what these people are saying, first of all, go to hell. And second of all, the truth is you. right here. The truth is right here in your face. And now that you hear it, now that you see it, what are you going to do about it? And I thought her big smiles as she edged towards the window to make sure that the camera should see her mm. with her oversized hat was all part of the Promote Megan show. Yeah. Uh, that's really quite extraordinary, I thought. Well, and it is extraordinary. She played it and what it's, it's worth. Yeah, and it's, and it's smiling through the window of a car and which she let down the window and standing close to make sure that she should be seen in the uh, on horse cars parade today without any contrition whatsoever yeah. just shows what a brazen hussy she is yeah now that's tom bauer and they just go to the show with a brazen horse and they just go to the hall that's tom bauer that's tom bauer that's tom bauer and uh tom bauer still has a job tom bauer appeared on talk tv Tom Bauer appeared on GB News. Tom Bauer has been on Good Morning Britain. All of those people that say the nastiest things about Megan, they don't lose their jobs. They don't lose their jobs. When they need someone to say something absolutely horrible to make sure that this, uh, uh, what do you call it, a uh, hate campaign continues unabated, those are the people they call up. That is why they are employable is not because they're smart, not because they are the nicest people, but because they will do the bidding of the tabloid media overlords like Lord Nappy Head or uh, Rupert Murdoch. They, they have used these people as a sword to go after anyone that they disagree with, anyone who runs foul of their intentions are subject to this hate campaign. And in the past few years, 
nobody has gotten it worse than Megan. Nobody. Megan has been vetted as though she's running for president. The only thing is a presidential campaign lasts about two years. They have been after Megan since 2017, 16, 17. They have been after Megan that long. It's going on eight years of it. Now, you guys, I know this is tough, but this is the last one of these, so brace yourselves. But again, this is a teachable moment. You need to know or you need not to forget where we've come from. Yeah. Well, that, that it's not so much a matter. Okay. This is a privately leaked WhatsApp conversation with a, with a former Tory friend. Um, the remarks about Prince Harry's fiance claiming that uh, black actresses entry into the royal family would pave the way for a black king. During this shocking tirade, uh, you uh, claimed that you uh, would never have sex. And I actually, I, I find this word hard to say out loud, but I'm going to say it in the context of what it was. You would never have sex with a Negro. You described black people as ugly. You suggested that Meghan would taint the royal family because she is mixed race. Um, I mean, you know, you just don't sound like a very nice person. It doesn't sound very nice, no. Um, there's a lot in there, uh, what you said, um, Meghan Markle. I think my comments about her uh, were disgusting. They were meant to shock and they were private and I never intended them to um, be put in the But public. at that point, you were in the public eye. No, I wasn't. No. At no point. At no point. So, so, no. so, have you have you tempered what you said because you are in the? Oh, absolutely. Guy? Yeah, I think you know. We go. You know, we go further. Um, this is a privately leaked WhatsApp. Black King. Okay, so that was it. It was just a minute long, but this is where uh, we've been. This is what we've come from. This is where we've been. However, you want to couch it. Uh, but that that is that is what Megan's been through. And fortunately, fortunately, the wider public is hearing this in some cases for the first time. And in most cases, I'm sorry to say they'll probably never hear any of this stuff. But this is British television. This is British television. This is stuff that plays out on British TV. If American television was like this, I, I don't know what I would do. I, I'd be incredibly shocked. And even on Fox News, even on Fox News, um, there, there's certain limitations to some of the things that, that they will uh, do or say. But here... This is morning television. And um, I have to give credit to um, Schofield, Philip Schofield. Um, there, there's, there's been a couple of occasions when he's actually said the things that needed to, uh, well, ask those questions that needed to be asked, uh, especially with Camilla Tomini. Nobody else. Is it any wonder why uh, they exposed him and he was wrong for the things he did, but they exposed him and ran him off of television. And of course, the co-conspirators, Kitty, Baldy Locks, the horse, and of course that pathetic uh, mound of flesh down there at the end, Charles, um, this this was the last time that they were all together with uh, Harry and Meghan until the Queen died. But uh, aside from that, I don't think they've all been together on more than... I think that was that other... Uh, was it the Troop in the Color? When they had the... Um, what was the occasion? The... Um, okay, they had the horse parade. Um, Camilla wasn't in it, though. And um, they had the prayer service at the 
St. Paul's Cathedral. So yeah, those other occasions. Now, um, sometimes, sometimes we can get even, right? Sometimes we can see people uh, exposed or sometimes we'll see people punished. And so somewhere up in heaven, a beautiful queen of hearts, the people's princess, is looking down and smiling on the Sussex family. And of course, she can watch her grandkids grow up and everything. I suppose she's watching the kids over there in Narnia too. But I would say that that beautiful angel, that princess was displeased by what she saw. And so looking down from heaven, she looked at her eldest son. This is the view from heaven, by the way. She looked down upon her eldest son and she didn't like what she was seeing. So <laughs> so she reached down from heaven and snatched all his good looks away. She did. She reached down from heaven and took all of his good looks away. Let me see. There you go. You see what I mean? Wait a minute. There it is. What was Prince Charming turned into Willie Leaks. Yes, Prince Charming turned into Willie Leaks. She reached down from above and snatched all those good looks away. What was the most eligible uh, bachelor? Actually, was he ever eligible? I think he started losing his looks so fast. But um, yeah, our, our queen of hearts wasn't having it. She had to reach down and teach somebody a lesson. <laughs> she had to reach down and teach somebody a lesson because they didn't think fat meat was greasy. And you know what they say, if you don't think fat meat greasy, you're going to get your head busted. Take a look there. In 2001, Willie Leakes was so handsome and good looking. And look at that beautiful golden blonde hair. Fast forward to 2016. There he is wearing glasses and picking boogers and everything else. Poor guy. You know what they say, a good thing can't last forever especially to people like that. But um, people have been feeling sorry for uh, Baldy Locks, so they have been trying to help him establish a new look. Like right here, they gave him some of that, um, I don't know, Alec Baldwin, Tom Cruise kind of hair. Um, what's his name? Or you can see here on the right side, since he doesn't seem to have a good, connection with uh, people in Africa, they were trying to, you know, give him a little style that not only could carry him through places like Ukraine, but he could also use that style straight down to Africa. So, yeah. It's kind of like a, um, a Ju Julius Cornrow instead of, yeah. I think that's a good look for him. It kind of looks like a, a halo. And then, of course, um, there on the left side, channeling, um, what's her name? Oh, gosh, what is that child actress name? Oh, Shirley Temple. Channeling Shirley Temple and George Washington all at the same time kind of like Shirley Temple meets George Washington. And then there on the right, now see, he could wear that uh, and, and hang out with the rest of the baby mamas. You know what I mean? He could go to a uh, chaperone a school trip or he could wear that for laundry day. Huh? Yeah, he could wear that on laundry day. It's a little flirty. It's a little flirty, but I think he can pull it off. And the good thing about those blonde um, curls, 
spiral curls or corkscrew curls is that it complements his teeth, right? Yellow hair, yellow teeth. Golden hair, golden teeth. And then, of course, Coolio, or you can kind of spike it up. Or you can do the, um, oh gosh, what's his name? <laughs> the Wall of Sound. I'm so bad with names today. Uh, Phil Spector. You could do a Phil Spector or a Boris Johnson or North Korea deal leader or Donald Trump. He could do the Donald Trump. He certainly got the mentality for it. Or he could do, um, oh gosh, I'm trying to think, what movie was that? <laughs> but yeah, he could do that. He could do that one too. Kind of like, um, what do you call those people? Uh, emo, kind of like an emo or something. And then, of course... Uh, if he really wants to be down with it, if he wants to shoot some basketball or something like that, go with the good old-fashioned cornrows. Yeah, that's old school right there. We go way back like cornrows. And how about some barrettes, you know, if you want to do some jump rope or something like that? Miss Mary Mac. Mac, Mac, all dressed in black, black, black. Yeah, he could do that. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick. You know what I'm saying? He could do a little double dutch. And when you're, ch when you're feeling very kid in play, when you want to sleep rough with a black man and you want to be ethnic looking so you can blend in to the night, of course you have to go with that big giant wedge cut. Right? Now, I think that suits him just fine. And check out that big gold chain he got on. Platinum. Platinum chain. Bet it's heavy. But again, from beauty to beast. Beauty and the beast. He has gone from beauty to beast. No wonder he's so angry. But... I think he could still do the North Korea, but just cut it down a little bit because if if it's too big, then people, I mean, look at him. He got it. Actually, that's Chairman Mao. That's Chairman Mao. Look at look at the jacket he's got on. He's got that tunic on. That is Chairman Mao. Chairman Mao of the People's Republic of China. Now that's a good look for him. A chip off the old communists. Willie Leakes as Chairman Mao. Ni hao. Yeah. Well, time only takes. It doesn't give you anything. Thank you, Princess Diana. And I'm sure Willie has been trying to find those infinity stones so he could snap his finger and go right back to where he was when he's not blaming Africans for loss of habitat and pollution. Um, but yeah, if he could do that, I think that, <laughs> I think Africa would be in trouble. <laughs> you know how he is about Africa. Africa is mine. Um, the press keeps talking about this, but this is actually um, AI. As you can see, the hair is blended together. AI didn't know how to do it or separate it, but notice that um, Harry has more hair, according to AI. They were kind of generous with Willie, but Harry has more hair. Willie is crying. You know, guys, if this ever happened, if Willie ever saw the light... I think it would be good for everybody involved. That that should happen, I, I doubt it. But I, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. But until then, uh, it's still back to the Sandringham Summit. 
And with that, you guys, I am done. Uh, sorry we started so late, but um, uh, it's just so much information to go through. I was literally just stuck reading things, and it was an interesting day. Interesting. His heart is too dark for a rebirth. Yeah, I'm afraid that's probably true. I, I hate to say it, but it's probably true. He's got some very uh, sinister people around him. And as long as he keep those people around, then I'm afraid that the future is looking very dim where um, the royal family is concerned. So I'm not going to drag it out, you guys. Thank you so much uh, for being here. Uh, thank you for your generous contributions to Royal Sussex. Thank you for your memberships. Thank you, moderators, as always, for keeping this a very safe space. And uh, do pray for Petto's dad, who uh, is not well right now, but let's hope he gets well and gets home with family and everything. Um, Petto was on earlier today, so if you guys could please make sure that you include uh, Petto in your viewing. Um, maybe for tomorrow or later today, but she was on today. And um, she is a very important voice to the Sussex Squad community. So um, make sure you do support her. Oh, um, Lisette Zog, thank you so much for the super sticker and thank you for being here. Thanks Baron for being a Sussex warrior. Here, here, Sussex warrior. I like that. Okay, let me find something to close with. Uh, don't wanna keep you guys, but thank you so much for being patient. And you know what, thank you all the unsung heroes like I said, I know it's been tough supporting the Sussexes at a time when people were not paying attention. But now the world is paying attention. And don't you dare feel like you're saying too much or doing too much just to satisfy their need to shut us down. Long as you don't get personal and threaten people, you haven't done anything wrong. So. Um, Oh, Yulibi, thank you so much for the super sticker. Okay. Let me find something. I'll try to find something cool like I found yesterday. I did put that on the community tab. Okay. Oh. Okay. I'm done, you guys. Go to sleep or start your day, whichever comes first. Don't stay up too late. <laughs> this is funny. I forgot I had this. I'll share it with you. Give me a second. Wait a minute. All right. This is funny. This is funny. I like this. I totally forgot I had this. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think some of you all can, well, some of you ladies may be able to relate to this, but you're going to love it. Not exactly a last word, but it is fun. Uh, okay. Okay. Give me a second, you guys. Not exactly a last word, but it is fun. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait for you to see it. <clears throat> and by the way, if you can relate to this, um, it's probably a good idea to sleep with the lights out. Know what I'm saying? Just to protect your dignity or not to scandalize the uh, 
the other people in your life, your partner or whatever. Hey there. Falling asleep in a cute tank top. Waking up in a cute tank top. <laughs> Uh, if you wake up looking like a Picasso painting, stop sleeping in tank tops. You need to sleep in a burqa. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, uh, let's see some hands. Has that ever happened to anyone? <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was fun. Let me see if I can find something else. Okay, I'm looking. Give me a second. I'll just find one more, and then um, we're gone. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> mm. Let me see. I don't know if I could top that one. Okay, yeah, I don't think I could top that one. I do have an oldie but goodie, that's for sure. If I could just find it, though. Let me see here. I got a whole bunch of them. That's the problem. I got so many of them. No, no. If I could remember what it said, I can go right to it. But I don't remember the exact wording. Although this is a good one, though. Um, never be afraid to try something new. Remember, amateurs built the Titanic. Uh, professionals built Oh, I said that wrong. <laughs> Remember, amateurs built the Ark. Amateurs built Noah's Ark. Professionals built the Titanic. So don't be afraid to try something new. How did I mess that one up? Okay, that one's too dirty. Let me see. Oh, okay, okay, that would be fun. Okay, I'm so sorry I'm torturing you all like this. I'm just trying to find something fun. Ah. Uh... Mm -mm -mm. Okay, I don't see it. I don't see it. I didn't know I had so much. You know, I have like a little uh, place where I keep all of my uh, fun stuff like this. I have a, a file dedicated to all of my fun stuff.
If I see like an interesting meme, I keep it. Oh, this is a deep one, though. I like this one. If you have to constantly, wait, <clears throat> if you have to constantly explain yourself, move on. You have already lost the argument. Yeah. If you're, if you're explaining, you're losing. Yeah. I hate being put on the spot like that. And you just keep going over it, over it. That gives people power over you if they make you stay in the situation where you have to keep explaining. That is giving someone too much power. I say, say what you mean, mean what you say, and move on. Oh, this one is deep. When something bad happens, you have three choices. You can either let it define you, let it destroy you, or you can let it strengthen you. Okay? One more time. When something bad happens, you have three choices. You could either let it define you, let it destroy you, or you can let it strengthen you. Amen? Amen. They say 40 is the new 30, and 50 is the new 40. But all I know is the older I get, the more 9 p.m. is the new midnight. <laughs> you like that one? They say 40 is the new 30, 50 is the new 40. But all I know is the older I get, the more 9 p.m. is the new midnight. I should put that in the community tab, shouldn't I? I'll do that. Okay. All right. Good night, you guys. You all go get some rest. Rest, sleep. It is time to sleep. Get your sleep on. I'm going to put that in the community tab now before I forget. Now, that one I forgot I had. I don't think I've ever uh, shared that one before. Good night, everybody. I am done. Go get your sleep on. Go get your sleep on. Okay. I just put it in the community tab. Lydia, I didn't send you that uh, thing I was going to send you yesterday. It's so dirty. Wait till you see it. <laughs> now, remember, it is not my money. I repeat, it is not my money. I have to say in my own defense, it is not my money. Oh, oh, you'll like this one. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to put the picture on there right now. I think you'll like this one. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Give me one second. This is the height of irony. This is the very height of irony. Okay, you ready for it? Okay, here it comes. Prophecy class canceled due to unforeseen circumstances. 
<laughs> That's cute, right? Let that sink in for a second. It'll hit you in just a minute. <clears throat> Good, right? I like it. Okay, that's got too many swear words. Okay, let me try one more time to see if I can find the one I was really looking for. Uh, 1,500, 1,600 people. Good night. I am done for today. Okay. Okay, let me try this one. Oh, there it is right there. I shouldn't have doubted myself. Okay, here goes. And this is the absolute last one. And then I'm really going to say good night. A recent study has found that women who carry a little extra weight live longer than the men who mention it. <laughs> that sounds like um, the weekday weekend update on Saturday Night Live. That sounds like something they would say. Okay. Love you guys and good night. Thank you so much. And let's end with our Madam Duchess. Mm -mm. Okay, Madam Duchess coming up. <laughs> <laughs> 